Okay, welcome to today's episode. It's an interesting time here in Byron Bay. What's happened is that Queensland, which is the state just above uh, where Byron is, essentially Byron's at the top of New South Wales, if you don't know Australian geography, and Queensland's the one above that. Now, two days ago or a day ago, the Queensland Premier decided to make the border between the two states closed. Basically, you can't get across from New South Wales to Queensland. Now, this is because down in Sydney, there's about 600, 650 cases a day of COVID-19. So she's like, no, nah, I'm going to close the border. And also anyone who is an essential worker who traditionally has been able to close across the borders also must have a vaccination. Now, this is an interesting decision. This, as far as I know, had no warning. It had no advice that this was going to come. Suddenly, the border's closed and you need a vaccination. Now, this in itself, whatever you judge about it, it's cool. You're up, you know, if you're a supporter of vaccination, if you're not a supporter, it, that's that's not what I want to focus on here. What I want to focus on is the, the effects of this decision. So all she's seen is the border. She's like, we've got to close the border and we're going to force people to make sure that they've got vaccinations before they can come into Queensland. Now, this had some interesting effects. Number one, four hour waits at the border. Four hours, like what usually is zero, you just go through it straight through, suddenly becomes a four hour wait. Now that means that anyone who wasn't leaving four hours earlier than they were expecting to be at appointments or to be somewhere in Queensland basically was late or just gave up. Secondly, some people that I was seeing had had medical appointments, like they actually had specialist appointments. They had no warning that this was going to happen. And so they were turned around, unable to see their specialist for their medical condition. Now, some of these medical conditions are, are serious. I diagnosed a patient with cancer the other day. And it's like, hey, <laughs> Queensland has the largest city closest to us. Gold Coast is a lot bigger than like, well, it's a lot closer than Sydney. Sydney is about eight hour drive, seven hour drive with the new road. Gold Coast, one hour. Brisbane's two hours. They're way closer, but you've got this border. It's never been a problem before, but now it's a problem. And so they were just turned around and they did telehealth, which is okay. Telehealth's okay. But I mean, I come from a medical family, like. My, my father drilled it into me that you must examine the patient. So it's very hard for me to trust telehealth entirely because if I'm like, well, what about if I need to examine the patient? It's very hard to examine a patient who's not in the room. Nonetheless, these patients turned around, not allowed to see their doctors. There might well have been medical consequences for that. And they're like, well, COVID's more important than your particular problem that's not infectious. Just because you got cancer doesn't actually matter. So that's happened. What else went on? Well, it was interesting because they failed to consider that one of the schools apparently had a bunch of teachers that lived in New South Wales. So they closed the border. The teachers can't get across because they hadn't been vaccinated. And suddenly there's no teachers at the school. This also happened. Now, this isn't a border one, but I heard the story that the Gold, one of the Gold Coast hospitals put out an email and said, if you're not vaccinated, you must leave the hospital now. Now, the vast majority of the staff hadn't been vaccinated, so they all had to leave the hospital. And then what do you think happened? They had no staff. It's like, man, are you, are you guys for real? Like, do you actually ever think more than one step ahead? You see, all of these consequences come from a single decision and focusing on that single choice, which is hey, we've got to close the border. But what the Premier fails to see and what that hospital administrator administrator fails to see is that that process is part of a bigger system. And when they change that process and make that border hard or say all the staff must have vaccinations, which, by the way, the earliest you can get is December. I had patients booking today. When can you get in? December. I'm like, oh, really? December? But you brought your, it's August. I mean, seriously, like we have a vaccine shortage here, which is pretty funny if you're going to force everyone to get a vaccine, if you don't actually have them. I'm like, again, 
Again, the mindset of these people is unbelievable. And the problem is that it is not a systems mindset. All they think about is the one process, the one part of the system. And when they do that, they fail to consider the impact on the entire system. Now, this is messing up people's lives. It's big time. It's like, you can do this. You can do this, no worries, but you've got to consider, hey, what's the impact on the whole system? Close that border. What does that mean for food supplies coming across the border? What does it mean for people coming across the border? What about for Queensland people coming down across into New South Wales? Are they allowed to do that? What's the impact of that? You've got to think through these things and look at it and say, okay, well, look, we could have this, but maybe it's going to take two weeks, it's going to take four weeks, or we're going to have an exemption to say, hey, if your name's down for a vaccine, then that's enough. Maybe that's not enough, but I think that the problem that they have is all they see is one part. They don't think systematically. They literally only see that one problem, but they never see it in context And so we're getting insane decision after insane decision after insane decision here in Australia. There literally are no cases of COVID in Byron Bay. We had a guy walk around with COVID for 10 days. COVID denier. He's like, no, COVID doesn't exist, but then got an upper respiratory tract infection that put him in hospital and they did the PCR and it came up COVID. Surprise, surprise. It was COVID. But check this out. The guy walks around for 10 days around the Byron Shire and no one gets it. And you might say, well, that's a bit of an anomaly. That's not what's been happening everywhere else in the world. I'm like, yeah, it's not. What's going on? The weirder thing, this is not the first time this has happened. This happened in March as well. Two people came down from Queensland with COVID, walked around Byron Shire, no masks, no social distancing at the time. Well, maybe there was a bit, but Byron Shire is a bit slack. Like it's Byron Shire, you know, like it's, it's, it's the beach, you know, life's good here. No masks, average to poor social distancing. One person caught it. What's going on? Like, this is peculiar. This is definitely peculiar. So nonetheless, despite all of this, they're like, now nah, closing the border, wrecking people's lives. How does this apply to you? Well, you're going to have to realize at some point, that focusing on a single process at, that is part of a system has problems. You go change that process, it will affect the whole system. It will. How does this apply to you? Well, when you are improving the systems in your business or you are building systems in your business or you are updating and improving them, then you must look at all of the processes that make up that system. If you don't do this, it's really easy to make changes to a process and not appreciate the impact on the whole system. You can break the whole system really easily. You can double up steps. You can misdirect steps particularly once you get multiple people working on a system, small changes in a complex system will have a big impact, most likely destroying the result that it is meant to achieve. Realize this, even a small change to a system may destroy the result. And that's the purpose of the system. The way to counteract this, the way to think about this is when you're making changes, when you're making improvements, when you're building systems is to have all of the processes available. So you can see, hey, if we move this to there, you're like, okay, but that's going to impact this. If we delete this section, that's going to impact that. Does that give us what we want? Yes or no? This is the systems mindset. This is what's lacking, at least in the Queensland Premier, but pretty much across the board. They do not appreciate the impact on the system. All they see is one problem, one way of of changing that problem and completely ignore all of the effects on the whole system. This applies to you too. When you're making changes to a system, make sure that you appreciate what's going to change 
in that system. I know that sounds a bit funny, but when you change a part of it, it will change the whole. This is what's happening in Queensland. This is what's happening in Australia across the board. People are failing to take into account the impact on the entire system. And then they get all of these chaotic events, all of these strange things happening. These are predictable if they look at it from a systems perspective. All right, that's all I got for you today. That was my rant on Queensland politics. I hope you haven't been impacted by it. If you have, now you know what is going on in their heads and how you can avoid these problems, how you can avoid chaotic outcomes, how you can build your business to work systematically so that you can go on holiday, you can take the profit and you can sell your business should you choose to at a much higher multiple. This is the power of systems to create results. All right, thanks for tuning in today. Look forward to seeing you on tomorrow's episode.